All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Team Building Podcast uh, without Jeff Cohn this week. Normally, we've got Jeff, but Jeff is, of course, Jeff uh, Jet Setting. He likes to call it Jeff Setting. But he is actually <laughs> over in Europe now, and he's on the beaches of Croatia this week with his beautiful wife for their anniversary. So my name is Andy Cuny. I'm going to be hosting the episode this week. I am the uh, success manager for Omaha's Elite Real Estate Group, uh, as well as Elite Real Estate Systems. So um, I'm really excited to be on this week, and I'm really excited to uh, not only learn a little bit more myself, but give you guys the opportunity to uh, get to know um, Matt Cavanaugh from Turlock, California. How you doing, Matt? Doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. Oh, I'm really excited to hear about it. So, um, so Matt, first off, uh, just tell everybody a little bit about yourself, because I know that um, if a lot of people out there are like me, when um, first time I want to meet somebody, uh, I want to know where they're at in their business. You know what I mean? Like, what's their production? What's their team size? So I can start to either relate or pick apart and find things that I want to know about, right? Like, formulate my questions. So tell yeah. me a little bit about, um, uh, give us kind of like the snapshot of you. Units, production size, location, market, all that good stuff. Yeah, so we're hovering about 100 units, about a million in GCI. Uh, we have half a dozen agents, um, you know, some of which are newer and progressing, and the, we're a small family team as well. Um, and then we have a little bit more support staff that we built out kind of ahead of, you know, our projected growth plan. So we have a marketing guy and we have a, a guy that handles both the TC and full contract to close, including even, you know, repair negotiations inside of contract. You know, our, our vision is, you know, centered around an agent being gifted at sales when they come in and not having to worry about anything else, you know, after taking on clients. Um, and so basically that's, that's where we're at. We're about a million dollar year team GCI right now. And, uh, you know, obviously looking to expand that in the next, you know, coming years. Very cool. And how many units did you guys do last year, did you say? So, so uh, 2017, we did 103 and we did just under 100 last year. Okay, 103 and just under 100. Okay, you know what? Uh, we saw that uh, the, the overall market across the country we, we saw was down, or at least here in Omaha, we know, was down about 17% last year. So that's impressive, right? It's to stay right where you're at, around 100 and 103. Yep. So you, you should be proud of that. Believe me, we've spoken to a lot of people around the country where they were, they were uh, starting to get a little bit nervous. Well, I mean, it was crazy. So it was like August, September, right? And the market typically slows down at that point, you know, for a couple of weeks and then it usually picks back up. Right. Well, we had a series of events with a couple of escrows that were like like four or five, uh, you know, houses linked to one escrow. So we lost 95,000 in commission in one week um, in September. And, it, you know, total gut check. We went from right. having one of the best months of, our, of ever to losing money that month. And, um, you know, so, and then the market never like fully recovered. So it was like, all of a sudden we're like, you know, shifting our activities a little bit more towards buyers. And, you know, uh, and of course we've made some shifts, but yeah, our market is completely different than six months ago. Oh, uh, right. Exactly. Yeah. Every, we've, we've experienced the same thing here. We're, uh, I wouldn't say that we're excited, um, yeah. but we're ready, right? We yeah. grew our team as a buyer's team, right. Coming through yeah. because obviously we, um, we leverage internet leads and things like that here on our team. And I think that uh, we grew this, you know, back in 2011, 12, 13, when it was all the buyers, we're still able to grow in the seller's market, but we like the buyer's market because a lot of the part-timers get out, right? Yes. It, it, start, yes. it starts to get hard, harder and harder. And we like, uh, because now value wins out on those listing presentations, right? Oh, it, well, it's wonderful. So like one of the things that I love, you know, doing some listings and, and I'm not like, a, a, I'm actually a very small part of our team's production at this point, but like. Um, the thing that I love is all of the data in our market is pointing that the prices are going to go down. Like when you look at the five economic indicators right. in terms of, so for me, like before, when I was going after expired, which is a lot of our business, it was actually hard to tell somebody to sell now because the indicators were that the market was going up for all these years. And now it's so much easier going to listing presentation. They want to sell at 425 or 350 and, and you know that they're 50,000 high or 30,000 high. You can now say, look, you can, you can drop it 30,000, sell it now, or you can wait and sell it for even less later on. And here's why. And there's real data that shows why they need to get on the train and get going now. Like, right. It's very refreshing to be able to bring value like that, right? To the yes. presentation instead of them walking in saying, well, I could, I could just put a sign in my yard and sell it myself. That's <laughs> you know right. I mean? and, and they could have, you know, it was hard to really logistically argue with them before. And now it's like, yeah, good luck. You right. know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're really, really excited about it. And now, now you said, you mentioned something there, and I want to touch on that real quick before we have you kind of dive into to your roadmap and what brought you to where you are today. Um, what, you said the five economic indicators, go over those for those of the, those of uh, listeners out there that don't know what you're talking about. 
Yeah. So you're talking about the amount of inventory hitting the market. So like in our market right now, there's 27 to 36%, depending on the, on the month, year over year, more inventory now than there was coming on last year. So number of homes for sale, number of homes going pending is another one. Number of homes actually closing. Then you have interest rates and you have the general economy. And in our market right now, other than interest rates taking a slight dip in the last few weeks, literally all five of them are pointing downwards. And so and that's there's great a great information to have. Oh, it's phenomenal. And there's actually additional reports that we pay for that literally show what happens if somebody waits. Like, like you talk about the, the homes that hit the market that never reduce versus the homes that do reduce. And then what they actually end up selling for price per square foot and otherwise. And it's, it's just not positive for the sellers if they hold off. Yep. No, that's amazing. I love it, Matt. All right. I love your energy, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. excited you are. You can just see those of you who are just listening, if you could see Matt's face light up when he talks about real estate. I love this. Okay. So real quick, tell us, give us the, uh, the you know, four or five minute version of, of just starting out in real estate to where you are now. Yeah. So I came in with a, a few sales skills because I had a sales job before. So initially I was a math teacher, love kids, didn't make enough money to support my family. So I went to a sales job where I was door knocking and phone blocking, you know, businesses, purchasing managers, corporate executives and pitching. So I was just pitching to people that had five or 10 options, competitive options. And so, you know, built a huge like uh, database of like how to sell, you know, in terms of like knowledge. And then I realized, Hey, I'm making some decent money at this job. I should start leveraging and investing. So at the time it was like 2013, 2014. So we started going after tax default properties and, and buying them and flipping them. And it was wonderful, like great introduction. Um, and then I realized, okay, I need to be in real estate full time. Like I absolutely need to be my own boss. I need to go after this. But I was a little bit scared coming in to continue the flips because I could see the market was going up and I thought, I don't want to lose all my money. So I'm going to go in and be an agent and just go crazy. And so for me, I hopped on the phones with the expireds and it was like, magic. It was like, this is what I had done at the previous job. I'm calling people, I'm getting in front of them, I'm competing against four agents or five agents, who cares? Um, and so then, you know, kind of grew that out. So in my first nine months in the business, we did 20, I think it was 29 sides. And then immediately I wanted to build a team because I knew going in, I'm not in this to be necessarily just an agent. I'm in this to grow a business that I could be around people that I enjoy and love and help them grow and, and truly get to a place of freedom at, you know, a certain, you know, within three to five years was my was my goal. And I got introduced to uh, Joshua Smith early on. And that was what he told me too. He was like, Matt, build a team right away. I waited too long. So I was hiring people in my first year and trying to build a team within my second year. And which was really awesome. Like I'm so far ahead of where I would have been if I didn't get that advice. But I do think for those that are going to start the team early in the process, I think I faced a lot more headaches sooner than I maybe wanted to, right? Had I waited another year or two, I would have another probably four or 500,000 in the bank, which would have made some of these transitions maybe a little smoother. Um, but I don't regret it at all, you know, building the team. And so, yep. um, you know, we, we brought in my, my brother's our ISA. My dad's one of our agents. We've got several other agents Then we got some support staff. Um, now, so it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Dude, that's amazing. And I love it. And you said something there, you said, uh, you know, um, le first of all, you said leverage, right. Yep. And you didn't yes. just want to be an agent. That yes. is like Jeff's mantra when he's on this, when he's on this podcast, right? Yes. Like you don't, you want to, you want to build a business so that you are not just a cog in the wheel, right? Yes. And I love yes. the fact that, and you know what you, and I know you brought it up about may have been a mistake to, uh, to try and bite off a little bit, uh, more than you can chew that early, but I love it, man. It's all about failing forward, right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I, I truly believe if I would have went a different path and went a little slower, I would have regretted not being more aggressive. Right. Like no matter which path you take, you see the problems right. and see the successes in it. And um, yeah. And it's interesting because obviously I've been out to your guys's, you know, uh, you know, events and they're, they're amazing. And just listening to what, you know, Jeff has put together and seeing like, you know, there's elements like for me, I really enjoy very specific parts of the transaction. Like I enjoy going on a listing presentation. I enjoy like some of the negotiation pieces, but those are really like the things I enjoy most. And so the cool thing about leverage is you can leverage yourself completely out if you want to, or you can leverage yourself 95% out and do the one or two things that you love all day long. Exactly. Uh, yep. Exactly. So now, okay. So explain that. So you love the listing presentation, right? You love the negotiating, right? Yes. So how have you leveraged those other things so that you can just focus on the things you love to do? Because obviously if you'd love to do them, you're going to do them well, right? Yeah. So how have you so. leveraged those other aspects of the business? Yeah. So we have a full-time marketing guy that literally posts stuff and runs the pictures and runs all that process. And then we have a guy that's both a TC and a contract to close. So a licensed agent 
that is doing some of his own production, but literally like we take a signed listing agreement and I talk to the client if and when I need to, which, you know, it, Nate can handle a hundred percent of it. So literally like, you know, so now you go do the listing presentation, you get it signed. Uh, yeah. And, and not even always, cause we have listing agents too. So like, you know, right. like, like for, for example, I love like I, I can, like a sphere can come to me, I can get them signed up and then literally I can talk to them once or twice more on the transaction, make sure everything's running great for them. And then they're completely in great hands. Like that's, that's what I love. So it's just, you know, for me, it's, it's it gives me all the time freedom in the world to try other things. Uh, well, to build your business, right? Correct. To actually work on building that business. You get to turn around and invest your time, which is obviously the greatest ROI, right? We, everybody always talks about ROI and we like the, uh, the, uh, the uh, ROT, the return on yes. our time, right? Because that's our, that's our number one um, uh, resource. Yes. So if you're able to not only spend your time doing the highest dollar per hour activity, but then you have all that extra time to turn around and invest it into your team. Yeah. And the thing that I've, I think, really honed into this year too is ROE, right? So ROT is essential, right? Because you need your time. What I'm discovering is return on energy. So for example, what I've discovered is like, I knew from pretty much day one, I never wanted to be a TC because I knew that, but like, like we do loans as well. So we started getting into that business and it was like, I started to realize if I spend two to three hours putting loan files together, like two to three hours feels like a full day to me in loans. <laughs> I, I can work 18 hours a day in people and nope. feel energized at the end of the day or two or three hours alone. So I started to realize like I actually like expand my capacity for workload when I'm in my lane and, yes. and, and figuring out what that lane is. And so that's kind of been the big thing for me of why you have to leverage is you have to leverage so that you can be energetic all day long and people can look at you like you're a freak of nature, but I'm only a freak of nature because I'm operating in my area of passion, like pretty much the majority of the day. Right. I love, I love that. And it's, it's, I, I'm, first of all, I'm going to start using that phrase around the office. Now, anybody steps out, sounds to be like, stay in your lane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all week long. They're going to love it. So now um, what I also want to point out though, too, is, is it, it doesn't just work that way with like you working with people like our, our uh, operations manager, Kevin McGowan, right? We put him in the right seat so he can literally spend eight hours in front of spreadsheets and not yes. want to kill himself. Right. Yes, like he yes. loves it. Like he, it's almost like he builds energy by looking and getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And he comes yes. out and he's like, you guys check this out. He's been in there for six hours straight. And I'm like, no, there is no way. Right. Yes. So it's all about, and I love that you bring up that point because it's all about putting people in the right seats, right. Yes. Making sure. Um, so now one thing I do want to talk about you, I think you said you're up to, it was it six agents right now or yeah. four, six? Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah. where are you finding these agents? Like, where are you, how, what's your recruiting process look like? What's your hiring process look like? Yeah, it's a great question. So the first couple were, was my dad and brother. So basically my brother was in the Navy and on a sub, hated his life, said, hey, I need another job. And I'm like, look, you have no sales skills. Like, what, what am I gonna do with you? And he's like, I'll work endless amounts of hours to make it work. And I'm like, well, fine. So we put him on the phone and I don't know if this is a good hiring or training or anything strategy, but I said, make 1500 calls this week. I'm not gonna train you. Then you'll know how hard it is. Then I'll start training you. So he did 1500 phone calls and set no appointments. Week yes. one. And so I was like, okay, he's, he's actually dedicated, you right. know? I'm sure he wanted to cry like all week long. So then we started training him and he's actually been a great ISA. So he sets 20 to 50 deals a year for us, you know, the last two and a half years. So it increased, you know, 200 to 500,000 in GCI for us each year. And then that, that allowed us to bring my dad on. And so literally like within, you know, the first two, two and a half years, I got to a place where we were going to be doing 500 to a million in revenue, you know, in, in a place. So that's what started to free me up. But I didn't immediately start investing in recruiting like at all. Like we started building software and doing all these other things. Yep. And then finally I started waking up to like, okay, I probably should start like growing my age account. Um, and so literally um, we, we started running like a, a couple recruiting tools that, you know, post online. And my sure. thought, I, I don't know, this was a great thought was I'm going to hire from outside the industry so I could trade them how I want. And, you know, I, I think in retrospect, I think that was probably a mistake at least to get started in the sense of like the, the amount of time and energy you put into someone to get them up to speed, to get them licensed. I think that was probably too long. So basically about four or five months ago, we, we've really started in more instilling recruiting processes for agents. And so I thought, I think it was like October, I was doing some reflection and I'm like, okay, what's the one thing that I can do that's going to like knock out the most amount of things. And so we do training now for our agents every single day, every single day we're role playing and doing training for them. And then eventually we started actually expanding that out you know, to people in our area and to this Facebook group that we created. And literally within six weeks, we've had like almost 700 agents in this group now. 
And what's really wild is, you know, we just completely launched it out to anybody in our market can join. We have a 40 deal a year agent meeting with us tomorrow to talk about like coming to us to talk about joining. That's and amazing. So, like, yeah. So we're pretty pumped about um, what 2019 looks like as you know, we're now installing the recruiting processes for agents and then hopefully building the hub of, you know, training for, you know, what they can get here in the Valley. Dude, that's amazing. I love it. I love, we, uh, we do something similar with our mastermind group here in Omaha. We have about 600 agents that are uh, part of it. And uh, yeah, it's, it, we love um, the interaction we get and we do, we get responses from people we never thought, right. Would be interested yeah in uh, meeting with us. So I love the fact that you guys are doing that. That's amazing. And I love to hear that it's being, it's uh, so far it's being successful for you as well. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's just good. So, it, you know, it's enjoyable and it keeps me on my toes every day, you know, so right. yeah. And it's a little bit nerve wracking, right? When you start providing training to other agents that you're competing against, you know, it's like, I'm going to teach you how to call in this lead source and then you're going to be, you know, so I'm like, I'm hoping they'll all come over. Um, you know what? And here's the thing is we've done that before. Right. And, uh, uh, and this is kind of one of those famous stories. I'm sure, I'm sure you guys have heard Jeff tell it, but we, we just, we laugh every time we bring it up is Jeff offered that out to anybody in the market, anybody in the Omaha area wanted to come to our office. Um, and we can fit probably about 75 agents in our big room up front. And yeah. all he did was lead gen, right? I'm going to teach you how to generate leads. That thing was standing room only from agents all across Omaha, right? Wow. Big hitters, brand new agents. Everybody just wanted to know. And he yeah. said, hey, now next week, come back because I'm going to teach you how to convert those leads and the accountability you need in the follow-up and all of that, right? We had three agents show up. <laughs> three. 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 Right? Nobody <laughs> went. And so that's why we've always, we've always talked about it. And I love the fact that you bring up that point, right, is training others and, and giving, right? Yeah. Giving receive is everybody's always worried about protecting their secret sauce. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah. so every time I, I see people say that, I'm, I'm like, you know, it's it's uh, I we know the ones who are successful. We know how hard it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm fine telling because everybody wants to show up and say, well, what's the secret sauce or what's the silver bullet? Yeah. Right. Hard work. Oh, 60, well, 60 80 hard. hours of intentional work. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. So yeah. failing a lot, failing twice as much as anybody else is even willing to attempt. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and, and, and I, I remember uh, we worked with a specific CRM here. We did a training for another team here in town, uh, three hours. We went over and just showed them the ins and outs of the CRM and how we were killing it. And afterwards, they said, wow, thank you so much. That was really great. And we're like, perfect, man. Do you want us to come back in like, in like a few weeks for a refresher? And after you've had a little time to play with it, and they said, oh, no, we're going to get rid of it. <laughs> and we said, what? And they said, oh, yeah, if it takes all of that to make it work, we don't need it. <laughs> we're not even going to mess with it. And so right then and there, we kind of sat and we're like, wow, you know what I mean? You don't ever have to worry about hiding it because the secret ingredient is always going to be hard work. You know what I yeah. mean? Energy, yeah. putting people in the right seats, all of that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know what I mean? So exactly what you said, man, it's exactly yeah. what you said. I, I love the fact when I hear other people say it and you said it so confidently, you know what I mean? You're like, yeah. like, duh, like it wasn't even a question. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So I love it, man. So tell everybody, um, like, do you, uh, uh kind of a little bit of the specifics about you now, like you guys use a CRM, do, do, um, what, where do, what, what do you guys do for lead gen? What's that kind of stuff? Like? Yeah. So obviously we have expires and FISBOs and several okay. sources to get those data in and import it every morning. Um, and then for buyer side leads, of course, sign calls and some other, you know, advert ads we run on the internet and then a ton of Facebook leads. So okay. we're, we're running anywhere between 500 and maybe 1200 Facebook leads a month that come in. Wow. And, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Five to yeah. twelve hundred feet, and are you are you pixeling all of those, correct? Mm -hmm. And who does that for you? Do you guys uh, do it the, the mar house? Yeah, the marketing guy that we have. Perfect. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, we just have a few more minutes left here. This has gone really fast. I'm amazed. Okay, so um, tell us a little bit um, about uh, one thing. One more thing I want to touch on before we let you go is um, how do you or what do you do to create a culture within your team? Obviously, starting out with your dad and brother, right? So you guys had a really solid bond. But how do you bring outsiders in like that? You know what I mean? To kind of, uh, I don't know, keep building the business like that, but still keep that culture. Yeah, I think first of all, obviously, it always starts with the team leader, right? And the tone that they set. And for me, like, you know, just knowing my own personality, like I'm a giver. And so I, I would rather, like, I would rather sacrifice personal income, sacrifice a lot of things to, to give to people. That's just kind of who I am. And so it's important to me that we're bringing in that type of person. And so a lot of it's in the interview process. So we have a, a, kind of a fairly extensive interview process for people to join the team. 
Um, you know, it's usually five to seven steps depending on experience and process and whatnot. Um, and we go really deep into their personality assessments. So for example, um, I don't know if you guys have heard of the Enneagram, but we use the disc for sure. And then we actually get people the Enneagram and it gives us an immense amount of insight into how their brain thinks. And there's actually certain Enneagram numbers that are far more culturally beneficial than others. So for example, like when you look at the disc, you're talking about typically you're looking for a DI or ID is what most people say in terms of that. The challenge is that a lot of DIs, you know, they want their own way and, you know, right. So, but what we feel like is the Enneagram gives us a better, more complete picture of what that DI is, like where that energy, where that desire to dominate is stemmed from. And, and so, so that, that's been really helpful in kind of assessing on that level in terms of, you know, what numbers play well in our space and, uh, yep. Okay, cool. So I think there's probably a lot of people out there right now, they're like Enneagram and they're trying yes. to Google it, right? Like somebody yeah. just got off of their treadmill and they're like, hold on. <laughs> and they would yes. so spell it for everybody just so they know. Yeah, it's E-N-N-E-A-G-R-A-M. And there's nine personality types. And of those nine personality types, there's three that are inherently built for sales. There's two more that can probably do sales if they really push themselves. And then there's another three or four that should probably never touch a phone or any type of sales ever. Because even if they could get good, it probably wouldn't be good for them internally. Um, and so and that, that goes those, back to what you said earlier is be happy what you're doing and then you get that uh, return on energy. Correct. So the, yeah, so for example, the three sevens and eights, they, they are the most extroverted numbers on the Enneagram, but they all value different things. So some of them value being the achiever and some of them value challenge and some of them value fun and exploration. And so depending, like what we're like prototyping is which ones are best for buyer leads, which ones are best for seller leads, which ones are best for this or that. Because in our process, because we have an ISA, people have three options. They can have leads set for them, like appointments set for them. They can take okay. our leads and convert them or they can bring in their own stuff. And we're noticing that some of the numbers are better geared towards cold sales and some are better geared towards nurtured buyer leads and things like that. So, Dude, that's awesome. That's really interesting. Do me a favor, if you wouldn't mind, will you send me a link to that? Because now I'm going to give that test to everybody on my team and see how well we've done. Oh my gosh, I want to see the results. Like, right? it's exactly. like, I'm literally Dude, like, I yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and see like, like where are the top performers and what, what's causing yep. them to be successful? Yeah. Right. And see, and then uh, not only are they top performers and they follow with them, what type of leads are they working where they're having success? Because we always talk about that. It's like, we feel everybody just starting out is work those three buckets, right? Internet yeah. lead gen, sphere of influence, and then prospecting, right? Going out and finding, finding your business. And we always tell people um, is once you figured it out though, and found out what you're good at and what you enjoy, you don't have to do the others. That's right. right. It, yes. Now we're starting to focus on the return on time, return on energy, right? Yes, and actually yes. do what you like to do because yes. then obviously then you get down the hole, you know, step back and take the 10,000 foot view of, well, now you're doing what you love. And so then are you really working and you know what I mean? And all that kind of stuff, yeah. but it's real, right? It's, it's, it's totally real. And that is yeah. our job as leaders to make sure that we can help these people get to that point. Right? Agreed. Well, it's just been like building a team. It's so crazy because I'm like, some people will never ever want to call their sphere ever, ever. Like, and they never want to call a lead twice. Yep. But they'll call new people all day long. And then other people are like, I don't want to call a new person. I will call the people I know all day long. Yes. You know, and it's so weird how we're wired so differently. Yes, um, absolutely, man. I, I Absolutely. I love it. I, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, so I hope you come back to, out to Omaha again. Because yeah, I, I would love to. This is yeah. a lot of fun. Okay, yeah. so real quick, um, I know that uh, we're going to have a lot of people um, who are going to love this episode. So do me a favor. How can people get a hold of you if they just want to reach out to you, mastermind, uh, bounce ideas off you? What are the, where do they go? I, they, they, I mean, I'm pretty accessible. So they can hit me up on Facebook. They can hit me up on email, uh, Matt at teamcavanaugh.com or, you know, even by phone. So I can shoot you all that info to post in the link or, you know, in the description or whatnot, but absolutely. Perfect. Yep. That's awesome, Matt. I appreciate it. And uh, I just want to give one shout out here. We are going to be the next Omaha, or I'm sorry, the next Elite Real Estate Systems event is going to be, um, uh, that'll be here in Omaha, is going to be the uh, Berkshire Hathaway Shareholders event. So That's it's awesome. something kind of cool. Um, we actually do our team, uh, team, work, team building workshop here, but we do it on a Friday instead of a Monday. You're with us all day long um, with Jeff, Kevin, and myself. Um, and then after that, we, we all go out to dinner and drinks that night. And then the next day, we shuttle you guys all down in, um, in a, uh, a limo bus, which I didn't know that was a thing, but yep, we've got them. So a limo bus, and uh, we take you all down to the, um, the uh, stadium downtown, and you get to see Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger. You get to see Bill Gates. Uh, it's, it's, you know what, it's one, it's something that you should at least try to do once. I agree. Just to see it. I've been like probably three or four times now and I rarely ever get close to Bill. I give my wife my ticket one year and she ends up sitting next to him while he's playing ping pong. 
No. And I'm like, how does this happen? Of course, she's a pretty lady. (laughs) Of course, that could help. (laughs) It it, it always seems to work out that way. So anyway, if you guys ever want any more um, information about our upcoming events, stuff like that, uh, feel free to reach, uh, go to the website, EliteRealEstateSystems.com. Um, and again, we'd love everybody to check out the podcast there. You can see all our past episodes. And if you like what you hear, please give us a five-star review. I think we're on Stitcher and iTunes. And um, yeah, man, Matt, I really appreciate it. I loved your energy. I loved your story. And I thought you brought a, a lot of really good information to our audience today. I appreciate that, man. Thanks for having me on. That's awesome, man. All right. And that's a wrap, guys. See everybody next week.